This lesson is on similar triangles, and we'll begin right away by looking at the lesson expectations. So the first lesson expectation is to define what similar triangles are. Then we are going to know the various properties of two triangles that are similar. We're going to then use these properties to find side lengths and areas of triangles, uh, show similarity based on geometric properties, and find the length of sides in, say, for example, a word problem. So the first thing that we're going to do is define what a similar triangle is, or what similar triangles are. Similar triangles are two triangles that have the same internal angles, but different lengths of sides. So for example, if we look at these two triangles, they look the same, except one is obviously larger than the other. Right, so I'm going to label these triangles. This is triangle A, capital A, capital B, capital C. And the side opposite to uh, big A is little a. The side opposite to capital B is lowercase b. And the side opposite to capital C is lowercase c. Then I have the next triangle. And so I'm going to label this triangle uh, D, E, F. So capital D, lowercase d, capital E, lowercase e, capital F, lowercase f. And these triangles are um, similar triangles. So this is triangle A, B, C, and this is triangle D, E, F. And uh, these are similar triangles because they have the same internal angles. So angle A and angle D are the same. Angle B and angle E are the same. Angle C and angle F are the same. But as we can see, the lengths of sides are different because this triangle is larger. So these are not equal triangles, but we call them similar triangles, right? So what we say is we say that triangle ABC is similar, that's the symbol for, is similar to triangle DEF. Okay, so first lesson expectation is done. We have defined what similar triangles are. They are triangles that have the same angles, but different lengths of sides. Okay, the next expectation was to look at the different properties of similar triangles. So here they are. Similar triangle property number one. If two triangles are similar, then their corresponding angles must be equal. So that's just basically the vice versa definition of what a similar triangle is. So if triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF, then angle A is equal to angle D. So these two angles are equal. Angle B is equal to angle E, and angle C is equal to angle F, right? And we said that because if they're similar, they must have the same internal angle. So we're just restating the property from the definition of a similar triangle. Just so you're aware of another uh, way of writing this, um, angle A in this triangle can also be written as angle B, A, C, where the angle is in the middle, right? So B, A, C is also equal to angle, and you can try this yourselves. If, it, if angle A and angle D are equal, then another way of writing angle D is angle E, D, F. That's just another way of writing that, of writing angles, which you may see uh, in other publications or in your textbook. Okay, similar triangle property two. If two triangles are similar, then the ratio of their corresponding sides are the same. So if we went back to these two triangles, which ones are the corresponding sides? Well, if I look at A, what is the side that corresponds to A? It's not equal to A because they have different lengths, but what side is similar to A? Well, that is D. So, A, the ratio of A to D, is equal to the ratio of B. And see if you can pause the video for a second and tell me what is the corresponding side 
to be in this triangle. So pause the video. Okay, so the corresponding side is E. Then uh, C to F. So the ratio of A to D is the same as the ratio of the length of B to E and the same as the ratio of the length of C to F. These have the same ratios. Okay, that just means that, you know, for example, if this triangle is doubled, then all these sides have to be doubled. Or if this triangle, say, is shrunk, then all these sides have to be um, divided by a certain number. Okay, last similar triangle property. Um, if two triangles are similar, then the ratio of their areas is equal to the ratio of the squares of the corresponding sides. So that seems really complex. The ratio of their areas is equal to the ratio of the squares of the corresponding sides. So I'm just going to uh, write this out and it should be a little simpler. The ratio of their areas. So let's create a ratio of their areas. So the area of triangle A. BC to the area of triangle DEF. So that is the ratio of their areas is equal to the ratio of the squares of the corresponding sides. Okay, so what are the corresponding sides again? Well, A corresponded to D, but the squares of the corresponding sides. So A squared over D squared. We have all the corresponding sides here, so we just square them. Okay. So here are the three similar triangle properties that uh, we were to examine when we said know the various properties of two triangles that are similar. So we'll now move on to using these properties to find the side lengths and areas of similar triangles. So you have to bear these in mind. Interior angles are equal the ratio of sides are equal, and the ratio of areas is equal to the ratio of the squares of the corresponding sides. Let's flip the page. Example one, find the lengths of the missing sides if these two triangles are similar. So um, we're gonna try and find these missing lengths here and the missing length here, okay? And we're already told that these two triangles are similar, but these two triangles are not labeled. Typically in questions, they will be labeled for you, but we're gonna go ahead and label them. And it's good practice because it'll help you uh, remember what the rule is generally when we label triangles. So capital A, capital B, capital C, okay? capital D, capital E, capital F. So take a second and see if you can uh, pause the video and say to yourself, um, which side is lowercase a? Well, the side opposite to capital A is lowercase a, so that's equal to lowercase a. This is lowercase c. And looks like we do not have lowercase b, so that's one of the sides we're going to try and find. Five centimeters would represent lowercase f because it is opposite angle f. 10 centimeters represents lowercase e, and looks like we also do not have d. Okay, for this, we are going to use one of the three properties that we learned. If we want to find missing sides, we are going to use similar triangle property 2 because I know that the ratio of sides is uh, all the same. So A to D, B to E to C to F. So C to F, so I'll write that. I know C and I know F, so I'll start there. C to F is equal to B to E. B to lowercase e. So that's just that's a C. It looks like a looks like an E, but it's in fact a C. I'll just make it a little clearer for you guys. C. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to substitute values in. So C is four centimeters. F was five centimeters. 
B, I don't know, and E is 10 centimeters. So I need to get B by itself. And so what I'll do is I will multiply both sides by 10 so that these 10s cancel. And then if I do 10 times 4 over 5, well, that's the same thing as saying 10 over 1 times 4 over 5. And I can reduce this to 1, and I can reduce that to 2. So I end up getting, on the left-hand side, 2 over 1 times 4 over 5. Oh, sorry, 4 over 1. So 2 over 1 times 4 over 1 is 8 is equal to B. Therefore, B is 8 centimeters. All right, so I've already found one side length. Now I have to find side length D. And it's very similar to what we've just done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my corresponding uh, ratio, A to D, is equal to, and I have to pick a ratio um, with side lengths that I have. So I'll do C to F. Right? Otherwise, I'll have too many unknowns, and you'll see in a second. A is 6, D, I don't know, C is 4, F is 5, and because I chose C, F right here, that gave me 4 over 5, and I have A, now I only have one unknown, so I can solve this equation. The trouble is, D is in the denominator here, and I need to get it into the numerator. Okay. So uh, one thing that you can do is if you want you can multiply both sides by the denominators. And what I mean by that is multiply this side by 5d and because I multiplied this side by 5d I multiplied this side by 5d. And as we'll see here the 5's cancel the d's cancel and I'm left with 5 times 6 which is 30 is equal to 4 times d and then I'll divide both sides by 4 and d is equal to 15 over 2 or 7.5 centimeters is equal to d this right here, multiplying both sides by the denominators, that's just another way of doing, say, uh, cross multiplication, right? So in math, there's actually no such thing as an operation of cross multiplication. Cross multiplication is exactly this, where you just basically take both sides and you multiply them by uh, the denominators. Alternatively, here's another way of um, of doing this. So a over d is equal to c over f and then we had 6 over d is equal to 4 over 5. If I want to get d into the numerator I can use something that you've learned this year in grade 10 which is I can take both sides and raise them to the negative 1 exponent. And remember that when you raise something to the negative 1 exponent that causes the number to flip or you take the reciprocal of that number. So 6 over d we raise to the negative 1, I take the reciprocal, so that is d over 6. And 4 over 5 raised to the negative 1, that's 5 over 4. And this is uh, acceptable because in equations, what you do to one side, you must do to the other. So if I raise this to the negative 1, if I raise this side to the negative 1, I raise that side to the negative 1, and that allows me to flip my fractions. And now, very quickly, I can multiply by 6, multiply by 6, and I get the exact same answer. D is equal to 15 over 2. D is equal to 7.5 centimeters. So, again, two ways of doing the same thing. This way I like because it allows you to flip both fractions, get your D into the numerator right away, and I also like it because it's using a tool that you have learned this year in grade 10. Okay, example two, find the area of the second triangle if the area of the first triangle is eight centimeters squared. The two triangles are similar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I label these again. Okay, and I'm just gonna use my normal, 
labeling method. And you could use whatever letters you want. There's no convention here. Just, um, okay, and now I'm gonna label these sides as well. That's little, or um, that's lowercase d because it's opposite of capital D. This is lowercase f because it's opposite of capital F. Okay, and this would be lowercase e. Then, this is lowercase c, this is lowercase b, and that is lowercase a. They just want the area of this triangle, and they've given me the area of the uh, first triangle, which is 8 centimeters. So the area of this triangle here is 8 centimeters squared. So we have to think of the properties that we uh, identified at the beginning of this lesson and see which one we're going to use. This one, this one, or this one. Well, it's asking us for the area of the second triangle, and we have a property that involves areas, so this is the property that we're going to use. Area of triangle A B, C, all over area of triangle D, E, F is equal to, and so uh, we have to pick the, uh, you know, two sides that we are, that we know. So C is on this triangle, the corresponding side there is F, so C squared over F squared. And you'll see in a minute why I chose these ones. Um, and because I have these numbers, right? So area of ABC, that's equal to eight centimeters squared all over area of triangle DEF is equal to four squared over 10 squared. And again, I chose these because that would leave me only with one unknown, and I'm able to solve that. Again, same problem as we experienced in the previous question. Area is in the denominator. In order to get that into the numerator so I can solve for it, I have some options. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take both of these, and I'm going to raise them to the negative one. But before I do that, I might actually just um, evaluate what's on the inside here. So 8 over the area of triangle DEF raised to the negative 1 is equal to 16 over 100 raised to the negative 1. When I raise a fraction to the negative 1, that causes me to take the reciprocal. So area of triangle DEF over 8 is equal to 100 over 16 and now I have area in the numerator which will allow me to solve for it. I'm going to multiply both sides by 8 which will allow me to cancel those 8's and then I'll end up with area triangle DEF is equal to, and let's see, can I simplify this? Well, 100 over 16 times 8, well, that's the same thing as saying like times 8 over 1, and I know this in my head. I don't necessarily have to write it out, but I'm going to write it out so you can see it. That's 1. That can be reduced to 2, because remember, when we multiply fractions, we can reduce diagonally, right? And so 100 divided by 2, that is just 50. So therefore, the area of triangle DEF is 50 centimeters squared. Okay, question 19. Or sorry, not question 19. Example 3. Show why the two triangles depicted below are similar. And this is very um, a common question in similar triangles. So I'm going to label them. A, B, C, D, F. And I know that D, F, and A, C are parallel. So one thing that I know already is that angle A, B, C, so this angle right here and this angle right here are the same 
because they are opposite angles. So what I can say is angle ABC is equal to angle DBF and in brackets right there I can write that they are opposite angles. And so anyone reading your work um, is going to know that these are equal because you stated the reason why. They are opposite angles. Well, looking at this is um, parallel to this right here, can you think back in grade 9 of a pattern that you learned that would show you um, two other angles here that are equal? Okay, well, angle A Oh, sorry, BAC or angle A and angle F will be equal. So you can write that is your Z pattern for parallel lines. So angle F is equal to angle A and that is called the Z pattern or if you want to be technical, they can be called alternate angles. They're also called alternate angles. Well, if these two angles are the same in the triangles, and these two angles are the same in the triangles, then it would stand to reason that this angle and this angle have to be the same because these angles must add to 180 degrees, right? Because of a uh, triangle. So um, angle D is equal to uh, angle C and you can put in brackets the sum of interior angles of a triangle. Because if these two angles are equal and these two angles are equal, well then this plus this is equal to this plus this so these angles have to be the same because the angles must equal when you add them up to 180 degrees. All right. So therefore, we can say that triangle DBF is similar to triangle ABC because uh, the three interior angles are the same and that is the definition of similar triangles. They have the same internal angles. Okay, final example. Determine the width of the river below. Okay, Note that LK is 50 meters. ML is 24 meters and uh, sorry and MN right here is 24 meters I apologize ML right here is 20 meters okay so we need to find um, the width of the river which is TK and so I'm gonna put an X there so let X represent the width of the river. Okay, so uh, we have to first prove that these that these two triangles are similar triangles. All right, and we can start by doing that by saying that angle MLN. So this 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 so this angle right here is equal to angle TLK. And that's because they are opposite angles. We know that angle M is equal to angle K, and that's because these are both 90 degrees. And so that uh, leads us to the final uh, conclusion, which is if this angle is equal to this angle and these two angles are equal, then by the sum of the interior angles of a triangle, 
these two angles must be equal. Therefore, angle N must be equal to angle T because the sum of interior angles of a triangle must equal to 180 degrees. All right, so our, we can make our um, similarity statement, which is, therefore, triangle NML is similar to triangle TKL. Okay, so if we have similar triangles, that means that we can use any of the three properties that we uh, discovered at the beginning of this lesson. So we're going to use this property because we need to find this missing side over here. So I'm going to set up um, my ratios, which is this side, its corresponding side. So let's make that ratio. X over 24 is equal to, and these two sides are corresponding. So 50, because that belongs to the triangle with X, over 20, because that belongs to the triangle with 24. Now I multiply both sides by 24. Okay. And I can simplify a little bit here. 50 over 20. Get rid of those zeros. 2 becomes 1. That becomes 12. And so x is equal to 5 times 12, which is 60. So, therefore, the width of the river is 60 meters. Now alternatively, if you didn't like uh, the way I quickly simplified this, you could have done x over 24 is equal to 50 over 20. Multiply both sides by 24. Okay, and then if you wanted to, you could take a calculator and multiply 50 times 24 and divide that by 20, you would still get 60. Okay. All I did here was just quickly simplified. Okay, great. Um, thanks for watching. The practice questions are uh, listed here on the bottom. Um, so uh, you can go ahead and get started.